Hi everyone, it's James here. How are you all doing? Welcome to another video. Uh, it's a very grey and rainy day here in the UK uh, this morning, so I thought I would batten down the hatches, uh, do a quick video for you. So today's video is going to be called Gimme 10 A&M. And uh, the reason that I'm doing this video is that I've had uh, a little vinyl haul recently. And in that haul there were two records on the classic A&M label. And uh, I'm not going to show those two records, I'll save those for the vinyl finds video. But um, A&M is quite a special record label for me because um, when I was a kid my favourite band was Squeeze and they were signed to A&M. They were signed to A&M in 1978 and they stayed with the record label for many, many years. They were signed by Derek Green, who at the time was the head of A&M, and he was the guy who had um, signed the Sex Pistols, uh, I think it was in 78, and that deal with the Pistols lasted for about a week. The Pistols got embroiled in some kind of awful, uh, you know, shenanigans, shall we say, and they were dropped by um, A&M, and then Derek Green went on then to sign squeeze and shortly afterwards he signed another really big uh, new wave band so they were trying to recover lost ground I think but um, the A&M label the classic A&M label uh, was a real big part of my growing up you know strangely enough on this record um, squeeze always used the standard A&M label uh, this was the only one I think where they had a custom label so uh, not entirely representative uh, but uh, you've got a muscle man on the sleeve there so the classic A&M label, you'll all have seen it, I'm sure you'll all know it. It's not the most interesting label in the world. And A&M, I don't think, you know, I would argue that A&M don't quite have the kudos that, uh, you know, bands like Island have, uh, or, I don't know, you know, Harvest, uh, maybe not even Virgin. A&M were always it's kind of a bit more mainstream, I guess. They were more into kind of solid mainstream artists, less of the experimental stuff. This is a classic example, this uh, album from 1979, this is um, Super Tramp and Breakfast in America, classic A&M signing. Now the single for Breakfast in America did have the classic uh, A&M logo, but this one again I think has a custom has a custom logo, so let's have a look at it. There we go, there it is. So A&M were formed in let me get this right, 1962 by Herb Alpert and Jerry Moss and the label ran pretty solidly from 62 through to the late 80s, I think it was taken over in the end by Polydor uh, and then in turn it got taken over by I think Sony Universal, you know, so it doesn't really exist anymore uh, but there were so many classic albums on A&M, I love that cover, Super Tramp. Fantastic stuff. Um, so the other band that um, Derek Green signed um, on the back of the Squeeze deal was of course the police. Uh, what happened was that um, Squeeze and the police were both managed by Miles Copeland and Miles Copeland knew Derek Green, the head of A&M, from way back, you know, and after, after Derek Green signed Squeeze, um, Miles Copeland decided he was going to manage the police because his brother was in the band, Stuart Copeland, the drummer from the police. So he kind of, he got the police a deal on the back of the Squeeze deal. Derek Green had signed Squeeze and then um, Miles Copeland went in to see him and said, you've got to get this band onto your, onto your roster as well. And Derek Green agreed to that and then, you know, the rest is history. Squee, uh, the police became one of the biggest bands in the world. In fact, I think they were the biggest band in the world at one point. Um, we've got another custom label there. This is their classic album, The Ghost in the Machine. I really like this record. It's got um, a couple of my favourite tracks. Spirits in the Material World, which was a single. I've always loved that song. Invisible Sun, which is fantastic. Demolition Man. Uh, just a really good late period police album there. Second to last album. And uh, yeah, I've always liked the cover art on that one. Next one, classic New Wave artist, again one of my favourite albums of all time and we've got uh, Joe Jackson and uh, Night and Day, bought from Right Track which was a classic Leeds record shop back in the day, fantastic gatefold on this, there you go, Joe with his band in the studio and this record of course has got Stepping Out on it, one of my Desert Island discs. Uh, but also some other great stuff as well, Chinatown, TV Age, uh, Cancer, which is quite a good, uh, interesting song. And again, I've got a custom label again, so there we go for that one. Night and Day by Joe Jackson, another classic A&M signing. 
And another classic A&M signing, another band. And um, going back to Squeeze again now, so Squeeze supported these guys on their 1979 tour. Not on the back of this album, it was on the back of a subsequent record. I think this is their third album, and this is The Tubes. Uh, I think this is their third album, uh, it's just called Now. And this one might have the classic A&M label, so we can see. Yes, finally we have the classic A&M label. Uh, so, um, yeah, I really like the Tubes. Don't think they get quite enough attention, really. Uh, Australian band, quite kind of arty, quite influenced by Captain Beefheart. In fact, on this record, there was a Captain Beefheart cover. My head is my house until it rains. Beefheart cover on that. They were sort of experimental, slightly edgy, kind of weird, proggy pop music, really. You know, very left field. And when they played live, it was all really theatrical. You know, they did these legendary, huge theatrical shows. And um, yeah, I've just always really, really dug them. I think they're great. That picture was, I think it was painted by the drummer in the band or one of the members of the band anyway. Uh, so yeah, The Tubes, another great A&M artist. And another great A&M artist. Now this guy, I don't know if he did a lot of records for A&M. I know he was signed to various other record labels. Couldn't honestly tell you, but this one was on A&M. Uh, this is Leon Russell, the great legendary American singer-songwriter from Oklahoma. He was heavily involved with Joe Cocker, Elton John, but he worked with everybody, you know, John Lennon, George Harrison. He was involved with the Bangladesh concert, and uh, he did many great records over the years, kind of funky, bluesy, soulful um, pianist, really. Uh, and this is his record, Stop All That Jazz, which has the most outrageously uh, un-PC cover on it, uh, with uh, Leon in a, in a pot, surrounded by cannibals. Uh, and again, we've got the classic um, A&M label on that one. So, there you go, Leon. And then, this was an artist I didn't know was signed to A&M until I looked it up. I'd never spotted it before. So this kind of breaks the mould a little bit. This is the Brothers Johnson, classic uh, disco R&B duo from the mid to late 1970s. And uh, this is the album Slam. And uh, let's have a look. Or Blam, is it? Sorry, Blam. Great gatefold there. So, this was a band I discovered via the VC, really. I think I saw someone share their records early on and thought, wow, gotta have. And uh, this is a custom label. Oops. I've got a light here, sorry, which is making a bit of a glow effect. So, uh, just trying to improve the lighting in here today because it's such a gloomy day. <clears throat> so, yeah, the Brothers Johnson. Another A&M artist. Right, now we move to a female singer, singer-songwriter. This is a record that I've had in my collection for a long time, and I dug it out during the lockdown and listened to it again a couple of times. Really, really great album. And again, it was one I didn't realise was on a and I hadn't particularly clocked it, uh, but this is Joan Byers and her classic album, Diamonds and Rust which contains all sorts of great stuff. There's uh, Hello In There by John Prine on here. There are a few originals. The actual title track, um, Diamonds and Rust, is by Joan Byers. You've got a Jackson Brown song, Fountain of Sorrow, uh, which is just absolutely classic song. Never Dreamed You'd Leave in Summer by Stevie Wonder and Sarita Wright. Great album anyway, really good, excellent. Such a beautiful singer. And what's going on with the label on this one? Is it a classic a and label? Yay, it is. You know, classic. Uh, yeah, Joan Byers. And another female singer-songwriter, fairly different from the late 1970s. Um, I really like this album, and I've listened to a fair few of her subsequent records now, and even though they're all good, solid records, I don't necessarily think she bettered this one. Maybe her second album, you could make a case for that, but uh, I think this is a tremendous debut album by uh, Suzanne Vega. Just called Suzanne Vega, I think. Uh, it was her debut from 1985, and it was produced by Lenny Kay uh, of the Patti Smith Group. And it's just kind of introspective, um, quite sophisticated lyrically, musically, moody, um, quite urban, poetic kind of songs. Really, really good. Excellent record. Um, and let's have a look and see what's happening with the record label. Yeah, it's the classic A&M. So, yeah, great album. Suzanne Vega. Uh, 
<laughs> right, I'm going to leave one till last, I'm going to sort of things over. Right, another one that I didn't realise was on A&M until I started doing some research. This is Billy Preston uh, and The Kids and Me. So Billy Preston, obviously, he was an R&B, kind of soulful, gospel-y kind of pianist, singer-songwriter, interpreter. Chiefly famous, I guess, for having played uh, keyboards on the Let It Be sessions. And he's actually, he actually performs on the rooftop concerts uh, for Let It Be. He went on to have a string of, uh, you know, solo records through the 1970s. Ran into some trouble in later years. I think he did time in prison in the 80s or perhaps even the 90s. And uh, he's passed on now. But um, this is just on the classic a and label. I won't show it to you. This is a really good record. I picked this up quite early on in my time in the VC. Um, I just saw it, you know, on a market stand one day and picked it up. And I was really, really knocked knocked out by it, particularly the song um, Nothing From Nothing, uh, which is a great kind of happy, clappy, tambourine -y, I don't know, it's just got a great, great feel to it. Kind of honky-tonk piano, really infectious melody, um, and uh, yeah, I love that cover. I think the cover was done, it was a kind of community project that uh, he was working on with some kids, and uh, they put together that cover for uh, his record. So that's Billy Preston. Now the eagle-eyed amongst you m might have noticed that actually was 10. So I'm going to sneak in one more. And uh, this one is an artist, I'm not particularly into him. I do quite like him really. Um, he had a very, very big hit record in the early 90s, which made everybody in the UK just completely OD on him. And uh, he's, he's done some cheesy stuff, you know, but his early records are good fun. Uh, this one uh, being the best of the bunch, I think. This is Reckless by Brian Adams. Uh, this, of course, was produced by... Oh, it's not. That's strange. You know, I always thought I could have sworn this was a Mutt Lang album. But no, no, Mutt Lang produced Waking Up The Neighbours, didn't they? This one's produced by Brian Adams and Bob Clearmountain. There's a name from the 80s, Bob Clearmountain. He did loads of stuff. Um, but this is the record that contains the monster hits. Um, Summer of 69, which is a great song, really, and Run To You, which is one of my all-time favourite uh, jukebox songs. Uh, from back in my student days, but um, yeah, Brian Adams, very much an A&M artist, and we don't have the classic label, we've got a um, custom one. So, there you go, give me 10 A&M, hope you enjoyed it, take care folks, bye-bye.